call cannot be completed is dialed. Please consult your directory oh. and call again or That's ask bad. your operator for assistance. This is a recording. So haven't you heard such a creepy music on your phone or on your Cisco Jabber? If you have been working with Cisco and the nice lady speaking a lot of times, guys. So today I'm here to solve such issues in your systems. Uh, for example, if you are making calls from Cisco Unified Border Elements to the service provider, you know, how can we get rid of such creepy musics and creepy uh, tones and creepy IVRs? And uh, how could we especially do some step-by-step -step analysis of such problems or errors on the Cisco Unified Border Element? Hey guys, my name is Amit Singh and uh, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are enjoying the video. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so because there are some interesting videos coming in about the special features on Cisco Cube especially. And then going forward, I'm going to discuss about Cisco Unified Communications Manager dial plans, you know. So let's get quickly started and see what's coming up next. All right, so let's just see and let's just test the outgoing calls from the Cisco Unified Communications Manager to the service provider. Why and how, if there are any problems, how could we troubleshoot and what are the necessary steps, okay? So let's just make a call. So I will dial the number 8-1-800-553-2447. So this is a long distance call to the PSTN that I'm making right now from the Cisco Unified Communications Manager user's Jabba device. Dialed. Please consult your directory and call again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. Okay, so you heard that, right? So there was a problem in the call, uh -uh, but I didn't start the logging. So the first thing that we should do is then debug CCSIP messages on the cube. And we would do, we would not do logging uh, term monitor or something. Let's just uh, log the calls and then we will see again. All right. All right. So. We see that there are some error messages or something. Let's just see what's happening. I dialed a phone number from the Jabber and the call was sent to the cube with the right plus E164 number, right? Because this is what we have done in our Cisco Unified Communications Manager. If you check in the Cisco Unified Communications uh, Manager, let me just show it to you. So we created a route pattern. So we created a translation pattern and then translation pattern was translating the number to plus E164 and then this plus E164 was sending the call um, to the SIP trunk via the RTP PST and route list. So that means from CUCM there is no problem. The CUCM is sending the right number, but it who is sending the 404 message so this is the this is the uh, cube that is sending back to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager that I'm sorry I couldn't find this number okay so why it couldn't find the number okay so the reason in the warning says that there is no matching outgoing dial pair so let's have a look at the incoming and the outgoing dial pier for the ITSP. So I'll do show run pipe section dial hyphen peer voice include 200. So these are the two calls or the two dial peers. Sorry, this is for an um, incoming van dial pier from ITSP to cube. With this, we don't need it. What we need is the outgoing dial pair to the ITSP. So this is the outgoing dial pair 
to the IDSP, all right? And we said that the destination pattern is this, 8, 1, followed by the rest of the number. But we are receiving this number, the plus E164, and it's trying to match this number. It would not match, you know, because we are not doing any translation, neither on the incoming dial pier from the CUCM as well. So if I do show run pipe section voice, uh, sorry, dial hyphen peer voice 1001. So this is the incoming dial peer, the LAN incoming dial peer from CUCM to cube. We do not have any translations applied here as well. So that's why the call is failing. So let's apply a logic, you know, and create a translation profile, a translation rule, sorry, and assign it to a translation profile and then assign the translation profile to one of the dial peers, okay? So my logic, what I'm going to do right now is, um, so there is this uh, incoming land dial peer, okay? And then there is, an outgoing van dial peer. Okay, so incoming land dial peer is 1001 and outgoing van dial peer is 2000. So what I'll do right now is I will convert this plus E164 to the correct number format. So I will add up 81 and then the rest of the digit so I will replace this plus okay and then I will apply this translation profile to the outbound band dial peer in the outgoing direction and the next thing that I'm gonna do is remove this destination pattern this one here because it's not matching at all you know 8 1 it doesn't match with plus 1 so what I'm gonna do is I will say destination pattern um, plus 1 followed by any digits okay so it would match any plus e164 number all right and once what will happen is once I have done this, what will happen is the call will first match this outgoing dial pier with the plus E146 plus E164 number. And when it tries to go out, it will first apply this translation profile and translate the number and then it will go to the service provider. Okay, so then afterwards it will go to the service provider. And then the call should work fine. Okay, so now we have understood the logic. Let's go ahead and create, first of all, the translation uh, pattern and translation rule and translation profile very quickly. And then we will say voice translation hyphen rule. I will just match it to one of the dial peers. So I will say 2000 because I'm applying to that dial peer to the outbound van dial peer. And then I will say it's a wipe. Oh, sorry, it's a translation rule, sorry. And then I will say rule one. And then I will say any number that starts with plus one. And then, uh, yeah, followed by any digits. You know, what you need to do is you need to translate replace the plus one with the eight one and then keep rest of the match pattern as it is you see replace plus one with eight one and then the rest match pattern as it is okay all right so let's just test voice translation hyphen rule 2000. 
okay and then the number that we are gonna match is the number that we are going to dial so this number plus e164 number okay so the original number is this it matches rule 1 in the translation rule 2000 and it translates the number to this number 81800553 that means the translation is working correctly now let's go ahead and create voice translation hyphen profile PSTN uh, out so this is an outgoing PSTN I will say PSTN out all right and then we will say translate what do I have to translate do I have to translate a call let or a calling number I have to translate a call led number okay so the number that has been called the plus e164 number okay and which translation rule it has to match 2000 all right we have the translation profile now in place now let's go ahead and change the destination pattern of dial hyphen peer voice 2001 2000 void so the destination pattern currently is this one and it is not gonna match right as we discussed so I will say no destination pattern and then I will say destination hyphen pattern would be match the plus e164 number all right now what we have is that we have applied the translation profile and we have created the right destination pattern so what will happen is first it will first it will match the destination pattern once the destination pattern is matched and before you know um, it goes the call goes out it should now apply the translation profile so let's go ahead and apply the translation profile I will say translation hyphen profile PSTN hyphen out so yeah here it should say outgoing because I am applying the translation profile in the outgoing direction to the call all right so the translation profile is applied now our logic is correct so now first it will match the destination pattern and after that it will apply the translation profile and then the call should go out to the PSTN as per our logic as per our configuration everything should work let's go ahead and quickly test it let's make a call let's just see what happens here I think I should make another call because I was slow enough so I'll just go ahead again and make a call So it's sending an invite and uh, coming back and sending an invite and uh, looks there is some problem let's see what's the problem okay I hear a fast busy let's just see what happened let's just analyze the logs okay it says here 408 request time out 
So why is it that there is a request timeout? So we see that the call is being sent and uh, it's sent to the right IP address. Um, but still, why this call is now being rejected or why are our invites? We just see an invite and then um, we are just sending an invite. There is nothing else. You see, there is no response. We just send an invite. So we received an invite here. So this is the first invite that we received. You know, so this was an invite without an offer from Cisco Unified Communications Manager. And then we sent a trying back to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager and then we sent the invite to the provider with the early offer. That's also right. We are correct, you know, but the interface, I think, is incorrect or there is some something wrong with the with the routing because we are just sending an invite to the provider with the early offer and we are not getting any information back you know so it looks like we have some problem with the with the interface or something i don't know let's just make sure that um because it sends an invite, it sends a couple of times and then afterward it says, okay, 408 request timeout. So currently I also don't know what's the problem. So let's just go and see the dial peer. So run pipe section dial hyphen peer voice 2000 VoIP. Sorry, just to make sure everything's correct. All right, I'm sorry I see that the interface that's that we have configured here is incorrect we are sending the call via the internal lan interface and that will not work so that's our problem so that's the second wrong thing that we have found out in our configuration so we just go ahead and then say source interface should be 0 slash 0 slash 1 for media and control you know because that's the interface through which the service provider can be connected the, the service provider cannot be contacted via the internal interface all right so now i hope we have the right configuration dial peer voice 2000 VoIP. I think now we are good to go. Now this time the call should connect. I will do a clear logging and debug sysip message. Let's just quickly make a call again. Call cannot be completed as dialed. Please consult your directory oh, and call again or ask bad. your operator for assistance. This is a recording. So we see that um, we are still getting this problem. And why is this problem? I mean, now we have... Um, I believe the right interface if I see that um, so this is the invite that is being received from Cisco Unified Communications Manager on this IP address and then we are receiving it via without an early offer that means COCM is doing a delay offer it's just an invite here with the plus E164 number that's correct and then cube sends back 100 trying and then this time the destination pattern is matched and this is why the cube sends an invite to the service provider with the same but with the same plus e164 number that is incorrect the 
because we should send it with 81 and not plus 1. This is the problem, right? We are sending the incorrect called number to the service provider and this is why the service provider comes back and says 404 not found. I'm sorry, I don't know this plus E164 number. You should send me 81. But why? We already tested everything, you know, and in the test we saw that the translation rule is working. We applied the translation rule to the dial peer and everything was fine, right? So let me, let's just test this test voice translation hyphen rule 1000 or 2000 and then the number. Uh, sorry. Um, so let's just test if it's matching. Yeah, the rule is matching. And if is this rule applied to the translation profile? Show run pipe section voice translation hyphen profile. Yes, we have applied the rule correctly to the translation profile. And is this translation profile assigned to a dial peer? Show run pipe section dial hyphen peer voice 2000. And yes, we have assigned the translation profile to the in the outgoing direction. That's correct. Then where is the problem? Okay, so the problem here is that the name of the translation profile that you have given is in small letters. However, the name that you have configured on the cube is in the capital letters. All right. This is why this translation profile is not getting applied. And it doesn't give you any error if you just write down print or write down any wrong name here because it's just the name you know so that's that's the very very common mistakes that people do you know because it's always the case that even if you have the right name i mean with the small letters you need to really make sure that you have written this translation profile name very correctly okay even if it's a wrong name the real pair is gonna take it so make sure you just copy and paste this translation profile names inside the dial peer okay so let's just quickly go ahead dial peer voice 2000 wipe and then let's just make sure we have the right translation profile so i'll just make sure i remove it and then i'll make sure that i write the correct name so i will say translation profile outgoing and I'll just copy this translation profile, okay? So let's just make another call and I hope this time it's really working. So I will say debug CCSIP messages and I will do a call. the Cisco Technical Assistance Center. We are currently experiencing high call volume. If you can open or update your case online, please do so at cisco.com forward slash go forward slash support. If your issue is urgent, remain on the line to speak with a member of our support team. All right. Okay, so let's just have a look at the logs and uh, then uh, we will see further. So you see that the call was connected this time and we have resolved the three issues that we had. You know, the call was using a G711A log codec or uh, sorry, U log codec and uh, it was, sorry, just let me do an all and uh, all right and now so 
when you do a show VoIP RTP connections, you will see the end-to-end -end IP addresses of the devices that were involved in the RTP and where the show VoIP uh, uh, compact command, you will see that there is a G711U law, show collective voice compact command. You will see that the G711U law codec was being used. The most important thing that we should understand here is, sorry, what is the IP addresses that was being sent and what was the uh, uh, information. So we send this time an invite. So let's just go one invite above. So this was the invite received from Cisco Unified Communications Manager. So but the plus E164 number from the internal LAN IP address without any offer. So there was no SDP content, just an invite. So it's a delayed offer sent 100 trying back to CUCM and then we sent an invite with the right number this time. Voila! This was the problem. You saw that the translation profile and then the translation rule were incorrect and also the interface that we applied. Okay. So now we are sending with the correct digits and this is why the call went. We send an early offer. I mean in the invite we send the SDP content and then we received a trying from the provider this time instead of 404 not found. And then there is a 183 session progress. And this is where the call will ring, you know. And then there was a 200 OK where we negotiated and we said, all right, this is the IP address where you should send me. Uh, so for example, here in the first invite that we sent to the provider, we said, um, uh this one so we said that we are okay to receive or we will be receiving the rtp on this connection ip address okay and that means the cube is involved in the rtp right and after this the provider said okay and then the provider said i would like to receive the rtp on this ip address and then this is how we negotiated we said 200 okay and then the 200 okay was sent to call manager and then it was acknowledged and this is how the call was then connected here okay and once the call was connected then we do when we did show collective voice compact and then we saw this information and after this there was a buy all right, you heard also the information or the call that was connected, some Cisco IVR messages from the tech. So this is the number that we were trying to reach. So finally, we were trying to test both the incoming and outgoing calls with some troubleshootings, right? In the next upcoming videos, we will see what are the new ways of uh, configuring a dial peer, you know, how we could optimize on the configurations of the dial peers uh, you know instead of four dial peers can we make it just two dial peers uh, if we have multiple e164 patterns how we could configure that if we have um, more than one servers in the destination how we could configure those servers you know can we use a csv file to define the e164 pattern maps you know if we have let's say 10000 different patterns how we could do this so these are the interesting configurations, new features that we would be learning uh, in, in the next videos and uh, keep watching these videos. Uh, I hope these are interesting. And uh, if you think there is any need of improvement, please do let me know. Or if you think you need any information on any part of Cisco Cube or anything, just let me know. I am gonna make some series on this and I hope you guys would like it, share it and subscribe it. Alright, until then, thank you very much. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you.